Man, look. Wow. <laughs> Where did that come from? It was like 40 degrees out this morning. It was bright like, you know, bright like my YouTube future. Okay, so I want to make a quick video. Um, I get, I've got a ton of people reaching out to me lately. They want to get into the supercar world. They don't have a ton of, I shouldn't say that. Not that they don't have a ton of money. They've got a lot of money, but they don't have, basically they don't have Aventador and Huracan money. So there's a lot of people that try to get into the supercar world on a budget. And that is exactly what I did. Um, but so I give you a little rundown. So I have, give a little credibility to myself. I've had this car for two years, as you guys know, and I would love to do a video where I broke down all the money I spent on it, but I also would hate to do it because it's way too much because um, I drive it hard. You guys have seen the videos. I beat the crap out of it. I convert it to rear wheel drive. This is literally, so if you look up here, this, that is all Lambo parts, all of it. Whole top shelf. There is factory clutches, spoilers, front bumper, exhaust, all the paneling. So I've pulled a ton of parts out of the car. I have modified a ton of parts. So we've gone through rims, tires, clutches. I put a steering rack in it. We've gone through, so we've got this set of wheels. We've got this set of wheels that we mounted winter tires on. Uh, fluid changes. I've put, what have I put on this thing now? 30, over 30,000 miles I've put on this car. So a lot of people are like, dude, your car breaks down all the time. I say, no, I drive it a ton. I drive the car all the time. So yes, things are bound to go wrong when you drive it like I drive it. We have also removed paneling. We've removed everything in here. Everything's accessible. We've got the B-roll full titanium exhaust. We've got the Reed's performance intakes. It's been converted to rear wheel drive. It's on full suspension. It's got carbon fiber lower balance. It's got a carbon fiber spoiler. Mind you, these are eBay finds. This was on eBay for 500 bucks. This is a $3,000 rear balance. I got 500 bucks because it had some nicks in it and stuff. I don't care. I have your donuts in the dirt. Um, the spoiler was, uh, you know, one of your eBay, or actually I found it on Amazon. Look at this thing. Super high quality, 1200 bucks. You gotta look around and get the deals. Uh, what else have I done in here? All the carbon in here, carbon seat. Obviously the car's been wrapped. We've had three different, two different, three different wraps on it. We got the jams done. So I've spent a ton of time, a ton of money on this car. Here's what you run into. The guys that hit me up are like, dude, I found a $70,000 Gallardo. It's a 2005, it's an E-Gear. Okay, E-Gears, everyone gets these cars and they wanna drive them. They wanna drive them hard, they wanna drive them fast, they wanna show off, they wanna get people's attention. This car gets people's attention, no matter what. This car gets people's attention. You can pull into a parking lot with a stock Gallardo and a $130,000 Corvette. This gets more attention. It's just, it's a supercar. That's what happens. But when you get into them and you get a budget or you get a, 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 a deal, there are deals out there and there's people that can help you find them. But if you run into needing to put a clutch in your e-gear in the first, I don't know, they last like the early model ones lasted like five to 10,000 miles. So it's a huge, huge, huge repair bill. Like, Twelve to fifteen thousand dollars, ten to fifteen thousand dollars, depending. Uh, so you got to be ready for stuff like that. The other thing, power steering racks. A lot of these cars. So if you're looking at like an 0405, 06, 07, 0, up to 06, I want to say, um, car, and it's been sitting. Everyone's like, dude, it's adult driven. You know, it's been sitting in this garage, in the heat, in the air conditioning. That's great. Problem is those seals, stuff that's in your steering rack, they don't care how long it's been, they don't care. They don't care. So when those go bad, to put a power steering rack in this thing, which, check it out, there's my box for it. It's like seven to $10,000. 
So you gotta keep in mind, there's all these little things that can go wrong. These cars are super, can be super reliable cars. I obviously am very, uh, that's a must for me. It's gotta be gated. Just some things to think about. There are some very high, um, high price point items that go wrong on these. Uh, another thing, changing your own oil. Uh, an oil change on this car, usually, Back in the back when this had all the parts, so you've got your oil filters right there, and then you drain it from underneath. This one's super easy to do it on because there's nothing in the way. So now when you go into a dealership uh, or a shop that does them, and you've got your full factory intake, your factory exhaust, you got this panel over here, all that's got to be removed. So an oil change does end up being like 500 bucks. You can save quite a bit of money by doing it yourself. It's uh. The oil I run with the filter ends up being about a hundred bucks change the oil in this, which is not bad. Uh, and when you drive as much as I do, it gets changed a lot. So let's see, what else? What else, what else, what else? What else can I think of? Oh, another thing. Um, I don't think it's terrible anymore, but there's, it's kind of hard to see out of the car. And when you get to car shows, when you first buy one of these, or you go to a gas station, or you go to a store, and you need to back up, you got to look through these, and through this, to back up. Look where you sit. There's a ton of car from here to here that you cannot see. So, this was the first thing that I recommend doing, is professionally having, I mean, if you can do it, you can do it, but be careful. Professionally installing an in-dash screen, which updates the car a ton by getting rid of the tape deck or whatever the heck was in there. Uh, and then putting a nice backup camera on here. That's key. That is huge because you will look like an idiot trying to park this thing. When I first bought this car, I remember having to back up in a full parking lot with people everywhere and it was so embarrassing. I killed the car twice. I had the wipers going like crazy. Um, I honestly wanted to just crawl in a hole and die. Uh, so it was terrible. Another thing, put a battery tender on it. I don't have one. Here's what you get when it gets cold or buy the good battery. Let's see, totally dead. No, so that's cool. But this battery's been replaced once a year. Last two years. So, don't buy the cheap battery. They make a really nice battery for this car. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and just buy it because I can't. Holy crap. Because I can't keep doing this. See, it's just sitting here, ready to go. So, other, the other, oh, let's see. Tires. Tires are expensive, brakes are expensive. All that stuff is expensive. You can cross-reference stuff. Um, you can, there's there's a ton of ways to save money with these cars. <laughs> Cup holders, check these out. This steering wheel, that's a must. The factory steering wheel is garbage compared to this steering wheel. The seat, so check those out. See those cup holders? As a Walmart special. This seat, though it doesn't look super comfortable, it is uh, well, it was one of the best best upgrades I've done besides converting it to rear wheel drive. But factory seat is the lower on the manual cars. It's the only ones I really know about, like, because I've driven one. The lower lumbar support on a manual Gallardo is like missing something on the factory seat. Because after 50 miles of driving it, the bottom of your back hurts so bad. This seat, Technocraft, <whistles> amazing, amazing, amazing. What else is I gonna show you guys? Oh, check this out, yeah. See, these are all parts too. We got extra, oh, what else do we got? I don't know, there's stacks of stuff in here. We got extra spacers, adapters, bolts, washers, oil filter wrench, oil filter. Oh, this is a super legere seat. When you do put that seat in, you gotta put this little adapter in so, so your seat belt light turns off. Uh, what else can I tell you guys? What else can I tell you? When you're checking the oil on these, when you first get it, 
go watch a video on how to do it. I can show you, but it's uh, you gotta let the engine run at a little, like I always just, after getting on it, driving it, get on the highway uh, and then check it while it's still hot right away. Like within 30 seconds of shutting the car off because what happens is with the, the oil sump, it has, um, it reads low once the oil settles back down into the motor and then you overfill it. So when I first got the car, I overfilled my oil and went up past the rings and I was so pumped. Just did my own, you know, added my own oil. Felt like I was a supercar mechanic and I left out of my driveway and it was just smoke everywhere. I thought that, I, I don't know, I don't even remember what I thought. I, it was horrible. I was so scared. I thought I wrecked the car. I didn't know how I was gonna tell the bank because I financed part of it that um, they can come get their they can come get the girl because I can't afford it if that happened. Um, other stuff with these older cars, all these tabs, every tab that's on here, like you'll see on some of this, when you start taking them apart and you start removing parts to have like wraps done or modify them, they're very, very, very brittle. So little tabs break and this is not, this bumper covers a couple thousand dollars. So be super careful with that. If you're gonna have someone work on your car, I know, I know, I know it's tempting to go down to your local shop, go to your local wrap shop who wraps Civics all the time and works on Evos, that's cool. But the issue is, all these parts are super expensive. So then you start to run into stuff like this. These, see my tail lights, none of those line up. Um, this has been wrapped numerous times, look at One of the most annoying sounds in the whole universe. That will be fixed soon. Once I, I'm gonna start ripping the car apart soon. Um, get the few things done that need to be done for the year. And then, I love the wrap. I do love it. Ah, but it might have to go. I'm really, 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 really missing the matte black. So that's a couple things to look out for when you're buying an earlier Gallardo. Be careful of the temptation to get a uh, higher mile, early year e-gear car without doing your research. Have a good PPI. A pre-purchase inspection is the best $400 you can ever, ever spend before buying one of these. Um, get a clutch snap. They can check the clutch. Obviously on the manual cars, they cannot check the clutch. You just have to check it out for yourself. Um, what else? What else? What else do you guys wanna know? All right. There's gotta be more to this than that. I'm trying to think of all the things someone, I wish someone would have told me. When I bought this car, I had no intentions on having a YouTube channel. I had no intentions on doing anything but driving around my Lamborghini. Uh, and now, after being through this, I do a ton of work on this on my own. I did the steering rack myself. I tried to customize the steering rack myself from an Audi R8 that does not work on the pre-LP cars. So if anyone tells you it does, it does not. So don't do that, don't do that. LPs it does because they share the same chassis as the R8. But these ones it does not. Um, if you get one of these in 04 or 06, put that bumper on. This bumper looks so much better. So much better. What else we got? What other neat tips and things can I tell you about this, this bad boy? Another thing. Another thing. When you are driving in traffic, you will be driving in traffic because everyone wants to drive up next to you and they want to act a freaking fool with their head out the window like this, swerving all over the place. So just be super cautious of your surrounding. I've seen a, a handful of little fender benders from people just going nuts, especially when we drive with like a crew of, you know, five or six cars and people just start running into stuff because um, they go crazy. So keep that in mind. Go buy yourself a Lamborghini, they're freaking awesome. It's been so much fun. The people I've met, the business that I have done through the car community is insane. Um, I, some of my best friends I've met because of this car. So go out on a limb. I couldn't afford it when I bought it. I couldn't afford to mod it when I bought it. Now look at us go. It will, it will push you to the next level. With that, you know the deal. 
hit that subscribe button. We are coming into winter. So things are about to be changing in here. I, I got this plan. And what I need you to do is drop a comment below. And here's what I'm, here's what I'm thinking. I want a fast car. Whether it's this car, whether it's another car. I want like a car like, like a fast car. So what if, do you guys think, if I went through my shop and started selling all of this stuff. Look at, I don't ever use these anymore. I got carbon spoilers. I've got, I mean, you name it. I've got factory seats under there. I've got, uh, I mean, parts galore up here that I'm never gonna use. I've got more wheels over here. I've got a factory brand new OEM Audi steering rack right here, Audi R8. I've got all these wheels. I mean, just stacks of good tires. I've got more wheels back here. I've got all these factory Lambo parts that I'm not gonna use. I've got these wheels. I've got GM wheels. I've got down pipes. So many things. So do you guys think I could build a 10 second car out of everything I have in this garage? Selling it, using it. Look, I got snowmobiles I'm not gonna use. I got bikes I don't use. So. Drop a comment, let me know. Let me know what car you think we should be checking out. Hit that subscribe button, I will see you soon.